So Graham, um, so we're starting the second part. Um, would you like to share a bit how do you discover divine truth? Um, I've been on a chat room for Anthony DeMello, who was a Catholic priest that had been kicked out of the Catholic Church for um, actually being too spiritual, really. And um, there was a little community of us on there on that chat room worldwide. And I discovered that one of them actually lived quite close to me, only an hour's drive away. So she had a she and her husband had a property near Gympie at Widgee, and I used to go up and visit them and spend a few days with them. They were doing the, uh, you know, they had a nice little property there where they were growing fruit trees and all that sort of stuff. And um, one time she rang me up and she said, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to the talk, a talk with this guy that claims to be Jesus. She was very hesitant in mentioning it to me. And he claims to be Jesus, you know. And uh, I'm a pretty open-minded fellow, so unlike a lot of people who as soon as you say that, they go, oh, you know, he's got to be crap. Anybody that claims to be Jesus has got to be crap. I sort of went, hmm, okay, well, I might as well go and check out and see what he has to say, you know. Um, if nothing, I'll get to see what sort of a crazy claims to be Jesus, you know. And uh, so I drove for the hour up to where this was, and there was like, it was in some little rented, small sort of hall, and there was only about 10 people there. And uh, he gave us a bit of a talk, and I thought, this guy makes a lot of sense. He makes a lot of sense. So there was over the next six months or so, you know, about once a month, they had a, a meeting somewhere or other, and uh, I'd go along and drive the hour up there to go to go to his talks, you know. And a couple of those talks were at Mary's parents' place, you know. One of those talks. Ma was, Mary, who is his his part partner of AG Miller. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah. Today. With today, but yeah, not yeah. at that time, maybe. Yeah, not at that time. And yeah. in fact, one of those talks was where AJ met um, Mary. Okay. And and it was one of those talks that I first met Corny as well. Who is? Cornelius. Who is, for people who do not know it? Um, who claims to be one, also reincarnated, claims to be the Roman centurion who hammered the nails into Jesus on the cross um, yes. and had a big, because he looked into Jesus's eyes at the time and saw love coming from this guy that he was hammering the nails into, um, it had, he had a massive spiritual awakening and um, yes, and, and ended up running into real troubles with the Roman authorities because of it. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I met Corny there as well, and uh, those days were pretty interesting because it would most of the talks were in somebody's land room, and we'd only have like about ten people there, so it was very intimate. And so got, was it how long ago was it? That was two thousand seven. Two so thirteen years ago. Yeah, thirteen years ago, mm. and um, and so we, you know, we. And AJ used to go and stay at people's places and stuff like that, you know. And uh, so he never came to stay at my place, but he went to a lot of people's places. But, you know, we got to know him just as a friend. You know, he was never... Um, I always called him mate, you know, and, and told him, well, hey, to me, it doesn't matter whether you're Jesus or not. To me, it's the message is more important than the messenger. And he said, yeah, that's a good, good approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I've always judged him based on what I see of him and what he says rather than whether he's Jesus or not, mm -hmm. you know. Um, to me, whether he's Jesus or not doesn't make a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. It's whether what he says, whether I can apply what he says in my own life and, and see the benefit, you know. Yes. For people who do not know about Divine Truth teaching, 
how would you summarize what what are those teaching about you discovered 13 years ago what's the main thing about oh. well the interesting thing is I've thought that there's a, a real core of what he says that could be a benefit to people in the long term and probably mostly once after you die once you hit the spirit world because the first thing is that when you die wherever you go you're not necessarily stuck there it's not like if you end up in a hellish place you're not stuck there for all eternity that there's a way out and that help is available to find your way out and that it's possible even if you might die and find yourself in a hellish place it's possible to end up in a what you might call a heavenly place from that place that there's that God has designed a system so that everybody can find their way to God and you don't get sentenced to for all eternity in in a hellish condition because you've done something wrong on earth you know um, and the second thing really important thing is that when you hit the spirit world after you die that unlike on earth there's a way to tell whether you can believe people whether what they're teaching is the truth and that's that the more spiritually evolved a person is this is in the spirit world the brighter they are mm. so uh, unlike on earth where you can get sucked in by any sort of a cult leader who can be in a really poor condition but because he's a charismatic sort of a fellow can, he, can, he can portray himself as a very evolved person and you can mm. you, you can get sucked into what they're saying um, when it's all just based on rubbish mm. um, in the spirit world you can say this guy is so bright I have to shade my eyes to be able to see just to look at the guy those sort of people you can believe what they say because they're in a much better condition than yourself so you, you won't get duped by these um, false prophets if you like and, and to me that's the the two most important things of AJ's teachings okay yes okay thank you um, <clears throat> Yeah, so to use uh, divine truth is a spiritual path? Is it a religion? Is it a... Uh, what is it? Well, it depends on your definition of a religion. To me, like, I believe in God, but not in religion. And to me, religions are created by man um, as a means of controlling people. And in that sense, what AJ teaches is not a religion. If you consider a religion as a path to God, then perhaps it is a religion. Okay. Does it have the dogma attached to it that a religion usually has? I, I mean the text and the thing you need to believe, like, like the... Uh, there is a bit. Truth. There is a bit. It's not totally without that sort of stuff. That It's an interesting thing uh, when I look at AJ's teachings. Although they're in a completely different place to a cult or a religion. Um, that doesn't mean that there's not some things that you couldn't look at from a perspective. If you're looking for some sort of cultish behavior or looking for some sort of religious behavior, you might find a few things that look that way. But Because of, of A.G. Miller or because of what? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean there's not a very good reason for them, you know. Mm. You, you can look at this thing from this direction and see this thing and look at it from that direction and see something completely different. Mm. So some forms of behaviour and some forms of doing things may look cultish, may look religious from this direction, mm. but from this direction they may look really practical mm. and just spot on, this is the way you should do things. Is that not the same for religion? Well, Dogma. religions would like to believe that, mm. but, um, you know, like they might say that you only have to take Jesus Christ as your saviour and you'll get to heaven, you know. So they, they would say that 
um, it's really practical because all you've got to do is believe Jesus Christ is your saviour, take him into your heart and you'll get to heaven, you know. But it doesn't seem to be real, you know. When you look at what's happened with Christianity and, you know, you've got all these people that profess to have taken Jesus Christ into their heart and stuff and then start sexually abusing children, you know. So mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, even though they say it's practical, the results don't seem to materialize mm. from a scientific perspective yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and you know the to me the jury is still out a bit on that in terms of aj's teachings because i'm still biting my nails i still haven't worked through um the in the core inner stuff that is the, the big the big stuff that have the biggest effect, the, the things that are holding me back the most, mm. they're still there. Yes. Um, so I'm not going to walk yeah. down the streets going, oh, you should mm. do all this sort yeah. of stuff because I would want to be an example that it all works. Yes. However, I've had experiences here and there which give me faith enough to continue that, hmm, it looks like this is this is an experiment that's worthwhile continuing, okay. you know. Um, so I can't thing, yes. I so can't thing. say for a hundred percent sure that mm. this is the whole the big deal, mm. you know. But there's indications mm. here that it's worthwhile pursuing, and mm. and in comparison to every other, like I've looked into a lot of spiritual paths, in comparison to every other one, this is by far the best. So and, and yeah. like the bottom line is I feel like if AJ's teachings ever become as popular as Christianity or the Muslim religion or something, the world would be a lot better place. Mm -hmm. So I might at times appear a bit negative in terms of what I say about AJ's teachings and AJ himself. In comparison to everything else else out there, it's still all head and shoulders above everything else out there. Mm, okay. And uh, there are 13 years now you are experimenting this pathway. Transcendental meditation this has been 30 years, so you don't know what's going to, to be next mm, day. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just an experiment, ongoing experiment for you. Yeah, yeah. But and, you and, and the feedback that I'm getting is positive. You know, I might not have worked through my biggest stuff, yes. Um, but, and there was a period where I felt like I wasn't making progress and, um, but I feel like I'm starting to, mm. I, I, I'm making a bit of progress now. Yes. We are going to talk more about, about that in, in the third part. Um, but I have a few questions more about you encounter of Divine Truth and how, how it went in the beginning. Um, so yes, the, you you just told us that you have um, kind of studied different many different paths, and there are thousands of paths, spiritual paths on the planet. So, what makes this one to be uh, of a better quality, of better truth than others, like you say? Okay, um, when I started developing a relationship with my spirit guide in 1995, before I met AJ, um, I actually created a website and started putting some of my channelings from my guide on this website. And even now, if I look back at those channelings, they're pretty cosmic. Um, cosmic? Well, very good. They are very good. Yeah. Yes. And um, I... Hmm. I think I've lost my place there. What was the question again? Well, the question is that uh, among you, 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 you say that the best teaching you ever ever met. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Among the thousands of teachings. So, so, what does that mean? I encountered some teachings at that time from Neil Donald Walsh, the Conversations with God fellow, and what was in his books was very similar to what I was receiving from my guide, and so I got involved. 
I was still involved, still doing TM, but still but got involved in the conversation with group, conversation with God right. crowd. And I used to go to meetings and, and, and it ended up where the meetings were at my place. So I used to have people turned to my place and we had the conversation with God's meeting of the Sunshine Coast at my place. And it was all very good. But then at some point I started to realize that the teachings are okay, are pretty good, but people aren't applying them. You know, it's like the people that come to the meetings, they're just playing in the kiddie pool. They're just, um, they're only applying the teachings to the unimportant stuff in their life. Mm. You know, they're not applying it to the big things. And I'm thinking... Like what? Like, uh, what do you mean? Well, for example, we went down to the beach on a full moon to have a nice thing on the beach in the full moon, you know. And one of the women who, who, who the meeting had previously been at her place, so she was like one of the people that had, been, had most experience with uh, conversations with God. She was sitting there and her kids were, you know, young teenagers. And they went running off down the beach doing something. On, and she freaked. And she went panicked that she couldn't see her children, you know. And she went running down the beach in this great fear to find these children, you know. And I just went, ah, oh, this woman has been doing this stuff for years. And look at her behavior, you know. Mm. She's taken on board nothing mm. of what all these teachings are about, you know. And I started to feel like, you know, the teachings are all right, but it's not encouraging anybody to really apply it in their lives. And so I started to get browned off with the whole thing. And when I started to get browned off with it, basically the whole group fell apart because at that stage I was running the group. And uh, when I started to feel like the group was useless, it all started to fall apart. So, as far as I know, there's no conversations with God stuff happening around the area anymore. And uh, it was some years later that I encountered AJ. And uh, what about other spiritual <laughs> paths? You mean you, when you say it's far above? Obviously, you have a very high idea of transcendental meditation. That's maybe the second best to you, uh, maybe you no. Know. So. What is different or what you feel is, is more important to pursue you now and why, why you don't drop it? Why do you feel it, it's, it's the, the best you have ever met? That's really... Well, there's the theology, mm. you know, the theory of it, mm. and that makes more sense than any other spiritual thing I've ever seen. Um, you mean logically? Logically. Mm. Yeah, it makes more sense and it seems more practical and it's more, uh, I can see things in the world that would fit in very well. And, hey, I don't have any, when AJ does his Secrets of the Universe stuff where he's talking about how high you can go up, well, I don't mm. have any experience of that. So there's whole aspects of his teachings that I have no experience of, so I can't be judgmental, can't say, oh, I can, I can be sure this is right because mm. I've got this evidence. Yes. But when we're talking about the stuff that's more practical, down to earth, um, that side of his teaching, I can say, well, yeah, um, it, I do have some evidence in my life that this is looking pretty much like it's... Okay, it's so I, are you speaking, what is important is like what the, the, the family life, the political life, the, the, this kind of stuff, the, the real life, relationships, these things you are talking about? Well, when he talks about God's love and man's love being mm. different, mm. that what man calls love is often not loving from God's perspective, um, that's what I've always felt. Okay. That... I've often looked at the way people, what they consider to be doing something loving, and I've, and I've looked at it and gone, oh, you know, that's, this is bullshit, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it all just, AJ's teachings on the nature of love and stuff, real love, 
fits in just perfectly with my own feelings and what I've got from my own guide. You wow, know? That's your guide. Your relationship with your guide has helped you to be discerning between the human love and some other love that is... Because yeah. most people, they don't have this discernment, no, right? No. What we believe, what we learn from our parents is what we believe is love. Yeah. So yeah. it's a bit different, your situation, because of your relationship with a, a being who knows more about love than you. Well, not just that. I had something in myself, like, I can remember in about grade three at school. Mm. At that age, the boys don't like the girls, you know? And we, I remember getting into a bus one time, and the boys had all sat with the boys and the girls were sitting with the girls and there was, you know, there was one girl sitting over here and she had a vacant seat beside her and none of the boys would sit next to her because she was a girl. And I just went and sat next to her and I just thought, what's the problem? She's a person. Just because she's a girl, you don't sit, you don't not sit next to her. So that's the first thing I can remember of, of the stupidity mm. of, of what people think, you know. And to me, it was like, you're treating her really badly by saying, I'm not going to sit next to you, you know. She's just a, she's just a person. Mm. I'll go and sit next to her. I'll talk to her, mm. you know. So I went and sat next to her and I talked mm. to her, you know. Mm. And to me, that was... I didn't consider that at the time, but it was the more loving thing to do compared to what everybody else was doing, you know. Mm. So I, it's it's not just come from my guide. So where does that come from then? Well, if you know anything about people with Asperger's, um, they often feel that they have a connection in some way or other to something. And at one point I was on... A, there's a website, I don't know whether it's still around, called wrongplanet.com or something or other. I don't know what it was. Wrong Planet, something or other. And it was all about this Asperger's thing where people feel, people with Asperger's don't feel like they belong to this world. And I felt like that too. And mm. when I was sort of thinking that reincarnation was the thing, when I was associated with the TM movement, they had reincarnation because that's basically an Indian thing. Um, I thought that in my previous life wasn't on this planet, that my previous life was on a planet where that it had been a more loving place. And so I had some sort of innate soul memory or something or other of having been in a better place. And... The way I think of it these days is that considering AJ says that when you incarnate, first incarnate, you're in a much higher state than what you are here, what he calls sixth sphere. Um, and then in the process of um, firstly being born and then secondly growing up, your state degrades because of the influence of the world and of people, how you go backwards. Mm. And I think that maybe I have some sort of emotional memories of being in this higher spiritual condition, um, which most people have forgotten. Um, Can you explain that? Why? How, how, how is it? Well, I, I suspect it's to do with Asperger's mm. and the the, um, the the autistic side of things. Like I know AJ has described people as, with autism as being really sensitive, and uh, but that they get attacked by the world, and that causes them to mm. close up. And um, but it doesn't close all your memories, obviously about. Having a feeling of real love is different than what you find in this world. Eh? Well, I think my all my life I've like seen through a lot of the bullshit that people go on with, you know, and I think that these days I think that's because of some sort of inner emotional sort of memory of having been mm -hmm. in a better state. Okay. 
Okay, very interesting. Um, yeah, um, just to come back about the, when you you first heard about you know Jesus guy, yeah. Um, well, uh, well, you you answer that. Uh, yeah, you say you were pretty open to whatever he claimed to be Jesus, whatever he is or not. That's not that important. So you answer that, yeah. Um, so, but many people are repulsed. So you were just neutral. You would say you you were neutral to this claim, like being Jesus. It has not been like, oh, this guy is claiming to be Jesus. Then I want to listen to. to. And if he was not claiming to be Jesus, maybe you would never listen to him. To me, I see a lot of people. They base everything on whether they believe he's Jesus or not. If they believe he's Jesus, then everything he says is to be taken as gospel. And if they believe he's, and if at some point they change over, a lot of people have done this, at some point they go, oh no, I don't think he's Jesus anymore. And then suddenly everything he says is, not, is no longer truthful. Like it goes from being 100% truthful to 100% error. You know, to me, everything gets judged on mm. its inherent worth. Yes, yes, it's very different from the average uh, yeah. person, yeah, indeed. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, so that makes sense. Um, yeah, well, another thing that happens often when some people hear about um, divine truth and this Jesus teaching, um, because there have been a lot of reports on media as well and but lots of people would just be afraid directly like of oh that must be a, another cult and that might be dangerous and most people would react like well with a lot of um of fear basically well i think i think a lot of people just make very snap judgments they make Judgments based on insufficient evidence, you know. Um, so, a lot of Christians, for example, somebody comes along and says they're Jesus, they just immediately can't be true, can't be him. You know, if he hasn't turned up on a cloud, um, accompanied by celestial trumpets, mm. um, then he can't be Jesus. Mm. Um, and then other people will go, oh, anybody claiming to be Jesus has got to be either a con man or a crazy, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they won't even bother to investigate. That is just, he's got to be a con man or he's got to be crazy. Oh, illogically that. It is. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, like, okay, it might be 99.9% likely mm. that he's a con man or he's mm. crazy and that's mm. you know there's been so many people that have claimed to be jesus mm. in the past mm. and you know um chances are not, uh, only one of them has actually been jesus and if this one is jesus yeah um i think there's a good chance he could be mm. he's, yes. it's certainly i give him the benefit of the doubt it's not from 13 years of observing it and experimenting about it, you have no contrary scientific evidence that is absolutely not. Or do you? Or obviously? Well, you say you're uh, Pierre Joseph. Now I can take you at face value and say, okay, you're Pierre Joseph. But you could be saying you're anybody. And uh, I judge you on what you, on you. Not whether you call yourself Pierre Joseph or whatever. So how judge you judge Jesus based on what? Like he might be Jesus or, or not? On what? Well, he doesn't walk on water. He hasn't cured people, and he hasn't done the sort any of the sort of things that a religious person might take as evidence. But even if he did that sort of thing, I might still go. Oh yeah, well maybe he's just got some sort of connection with metaphysical or some sort of metaphysical ability that's enabled him to do that or or he's harnessing some sort of spirit energy or something, mm. you know. Mm. Um, but is anybody who they say they are? 
you know, like um, the, the the sort of feeling I get about him. Now, this is just my feeling. Mm, yes. And it could be could be wrong, you know, but it works for me. The feeling I get about him is that, and this fits with what I learned from TM and from him, um, in that we have three bodies. We have a physical body, we have a spirit body, and then we have something other than the spirit body. AJ calls it soul. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi in the TM movement called it the causal body. He, he said we have a physical body, a spiritual body, and a causal body. And then if you read something like the Urantia book, they talk about the physical body, the spiritual body, and then this other thing they call the thought adjuster, which is a child of God. Um, so to me, what we see as A.J. Miller is certainly the physical body of A.J. Miller and the spirit body and the mind of A.J. Miller. But what he's claiming is that his soul is the soul of Jesus. So I look at it from a scientific perspective and I see these three bodies being joined together in like what the scientific term would be a symbiosis where you can have different things come together, like there are examples in nature. Like, for example, a lichen is a combination of um, an algae and something else. Is that a fungi? Yeah, maybe a fungi. I'm not sure. But it's a lichen is, is actually two separate living things living mm. together as one. And there are lots of examples of that. Like, for example, coral. Coral has this algae living within itself. And and it's, it's like you can have separate living things working together as one. And I mm. see the three bodies we have as doing mm. that. Mm. And what I see as A.J. Miller is certainly the physical body of A.J. Miller the mind and the spirit body of A.J. Miller, but it's very quite possible that there's the soul of Jesus there. And to me, that's why I don't call him Jesus, because he, he's told me himself that his connection with his soul is, is rather tenuous. And like in the Arantia book, they talk about the soul as the thought adjuster, Namely, that you're here having thoughts and feelings and all this stuff, and that the soul has an influence on you. It adjusts your thoughts and things. And it's, it's the ultimate controller in many ways, but it has this influence. But it is this other thing. And to me, A.J. Miller Jesus is, is like that, in that he's A.J. Miller, but he's influenced because he could have the soul of Jesus. And that's, to me, why he doesn't need to look like Jesus of the first century, why he doesn't need to be healing people or, or all that sort of thing, because he hasn't got the body and the spirit body yet mm. to have a good enough connection with this soul of Jesus. So when I look at AJ's teachings and when I look at his behaviour in the man, I see a combination of A.J. Miller and a potential Jesus. And, and I've known him for 13 years now, and I think the connection is getting stronger. So I'm seeing more of Jesus in him all the time. Um, but there's still a lot of A.J. Miller in there as well. So basically, that's why I don't call him Jesus. Why yes. I call him AJ? Yes. And what what makes you logically think that it's possible that his soul is Jesus from knowing him thirteen years? Um, I've never met anybody remotely like him. He's he seems to combine 
and an incredible amount of positive traits that I've never seen in anybody else. He's, he's considerate, he's generous, and, 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 but he's practical, and he's wise, and, and he's, um, oh, he's got all, any positive trait you can think of, he seems to have them in a greater degree mm. than anybody else I've ever met. Mm. And uh, so as a consequence, he doesn't strike me as being like a normal person. There's something very special about him. Mm. And it's because there's something very special about him in a positive, loving way. I, the, 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 he seems more loving. As I said, I have this inner feeling of what's loving and what's not. Mm. Um, there seems to be more loving about him than anybody else I've ever met. And that is what keeps me thinking that, well, there's a very good chance that his soul is the soul mm. of Jesus because he's certainly head and shoulders above anybody else that I've ever met. So why can not he be just controlled by a spirit with more loving? Is that a possibility? Yes. Mm. Um, and claim to be Jesus. It's, I think it is possible that he has some connection with some being that's in a much better soul condition, spiritual condition, than we are. But not that good enough and, to uh, play but, to be but Jesus. It, but it may not be a being that is happens to be the same person that was here 2,000 years ago. But to me, that doesn't matter. Because, like, if you're in kindergarten, and I feel we're all in kindergarten, if you're in kindergarten, a kindergarten teacher you may get a lot more from than you'd get from a university physics professor. So, you know, if, if I'm in kindergarten, which I feel I am, it doesn't matter whether he's a university physics professor, it's how good he's at teaching kindergarten that's important to me. So, yeah, so logically it would make sense or possible to you that the real Jesus kind of overclothed someone and, or controls someone to teach to the planet Earth. Well, I don't think the real... You know, if you're talking about the concept of overcloaking... Or, or, I know um, sure, but... Or what um, some people have called possession, spirit possession. I don't think anybody that's as loving as, say, Jesus would be would do that. Mm. Um, Why not? Well, because the the real the person that they're overcloaking loses their ability to be to interact with the world. They get sort of pushed into the corner. Okay. You know. So I don't think. Jesus would come in and say, you're going to get locked in the closet because I'm going to mm. take over here. Mm. I don't think Jesus would do that. Okay. So I think this, this concept of, of reincarnation that AJ talks about, which is different to the normal concept of reincarnation, you have to realize that when you say reincarnation, a lot of people are going to have ideas of what that means. To what he's talking about, what the sort of thing that he's talking about has never happened before, mm. um, and that there may be similarities with respect to, say, overcloaking, but with the difference that there's no soul locked in the closet over here. So you speak the similarity that's that would be the soul of Jesus that is yeah. kind of, but the the hypothesis that I'm talking about and we are discussing about being a spirit so obviously it could hardly be Jesus himself doing that because it would appear not loving things I, but I, it would be someone claiming to be Jesus who is not Jesus which I don't is, think it would be yeah. you know, if, if, there was, if it was something other than him not having the soul of Jesus as his mm -hmm. soul I don't think it would be an overcloaking process because his teachings 
obviously come to me obviously come from a place of incredible love and any being teaching from that level wouldn't shunt aside th that person's soul or whatever it is into a, a thing here and take over the body. But would that being claim but, to but, be but, Jesus when he's not? Because that's the only possibility. Um, it's possible that a being that is a lot more loving than us may see what works and what doesn't may go that um, the only way I can get them to listen to me is by claiming to be Jesus. If I don't claim to be Jesus, they won't listen. So there's no being that would not be in a loving place enough to tell the truth all the time? Um, no, it may be that they, f they go that if I'm going to have any effect Mm. positive effect on the world mm. this is something I need to do if I don't yes. do this I can't have any positive effect on the world okay okay um, so it's and, not a very and, and, and basically that's what AJ says a lot of like for example the conversations with God books that's a fellow who's mediumistic has a spirit guide, probably, talking with him, who claims to be God. Um, and AJ would say that that's just a spirit that's much more evolved than the fellow he's talking to, coming to him, and claiming to be God or Jesus or whatever, because if he didn't do that, the guy wouldn't mm -hmm. listen to him. Mm -hmm. you know? and, he's, and he just goes, oh, well, okay, if I'm going to have any positive effect, I have to do this. Um, so it's possible that something along those sorts of lines would be going on, but it couldn't submerge if, if, if say, the soul associated with what we see as AJ is, is, was actually AJ's soul and not Jesus' soul. It would have to be more like a mediumship sort of a relationship. Yes, yes. Um, and that the misunderstanding is on AJ's part. Yes. You know how AJ talks about people that believe they're reincarnated. Mm. Um, they've got a spirit giving them all this information about their lives and it comes in and they've got all this information about this life, somebody that lived a long time ago, and they misunderstand what they're being told mm. such that they believe that they lived that life, yes. and that's them. Yes. So... So that would be someone who kind of knows a life of someone who is not Jesus, and that is not in a place of tell the truth all the time, like the teaching are about. Like well, the it, teaching are about, you tell the truth all the time when you are in the But it could place. even be Jesus. Or it could be Jesus. AJ could be channeling Jesus. Yes. And just has a particular emotional injury still inside himself. Just a channeling, but he's not aware. So Jesus would not tell him that he's channeling. Well, he might not. Well, want to know. Mm. The, the process of mediumship seems mm. to be that you can't be told anything you don't want to hear. Mm. So, you know, this is the problem with mediumship mm. in that the medium always colors, colors and filters the message. Mm. And if you don't want to hear anything, like oh, I've stuck this with my own guide, yeah. there's things that I don't want to be told and my guide can't possibly tell me that. Mm. You know, so it's possible that AJ has some soul injuries, if you like, where he wants to be a, a Jesus, and so he's not open to the. So he's open to all the teachings of Jesus, um, but he's not open to Jesus telling him that yes. he's actually not Jesus. He's just channeling Jesus. Yes. That's possible. Do you reckon Jesus would like to channel someone who wants to believe that? 
or whoever they Well, I think Jesus, I think the celestials work with what they've got. If you look at Paget, the Paget messages, which were, you know, channelings of Jesus through a medium a hundred years ago. And they, they talk about, you know, the problems of mediumship and, 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 and all of those sorts of issues. And Paget was an imperfect medium. He just happened to be the best one that had come along be, up until that time. And there was a previous one called Swin, Swinburg or Swin, Swinburg. Swinburg. Yeah, who had, had been tried before and he was a less perfect mediumship. Um, and so I think the Celestials work with what I've got. They realize that, hey, this is not achievable. What can we do to achieve something, you know? But so, he was very aware that he was a medium, used yes. as a medium with yes. a real Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yes. But, yeah. it, it, you know, mm, yeah. to me, there's one of two possibilities. Mm, yes. Either his soul is the soul of Jesus, working through the body and physical body mm. uh, and spirit body of A.J. Miller mm. in, in a symbiotic relationship, and there's yes. no soul of A.J. Miller that's been put into a, in, into a box somewhere or other, so yes. it's not an overcloaking. Yes. It's either that mm. or, it's a, it, or it's Jesus acting as uh, channeling through A.J. Miller and A.J. Miller just has this emotional injury where he's not open to being told that he's actually not Jesus, he's just channeling Jesus. Mm. But in either situation, you're getting Jesus' teachings. Yes. So what does it matter? But both situations would make sense by knowing him and his teaching for 13 years. Well, to me, it doesn't make any difference because you're still getting the channelings of Jesus. So it doesn't make any difference to me. Okay. Well, it, uh, to me, yeah. to me, the message is much more important with than the yes. messenger. Yes. You yes. know. Okay. So thank you. It's the yes. channelings of Jesus, and that's what I think is important. Okay. Very good. Um, yes. Uh, well, yes. Another question about many people attracted attracted to divine truth. They have been attracted in their life by kind of guru types of teacher so they, they they want to have someone to tell them to uh what to do and uh what they you know they don't want to experiment for themselves um, and so what what's about you had you have you had these desires to have a, a kind of a guru type of teacher not to the extent other people have mm -hmm. um i've always been a discover it for myself sort of a person you know mm -hmm. like when I was at school and at university, people would say, this is the way to study. This is the way to do that. And I would try that and it didn't work for me. I've always had to find my own way to what, find out what works for me. You know? mm. I've never been one who's wanted to be given knowledge on a plate. I, I'm the sort of person that wants to discover it for myself. You can welcome to give me the knowledge on a plate. And I'll go, mm, okay, I'll test this and see if it works, if it appears to be real, mm. you know. And, um, but I know a lot of people, they are like that. They want to be told something because they don't want to have to develop the discrimination to be able to tell whether it's truth or error. And it's, it's the same inherent injury that causes Christians to want to believe that the Bible is 100%, is God's word. So why? Because if the Bible... If the Bible's not 100% God's Word, then Christians have to then go, well, how do we discover what's God, what's the truth, and what's not in the Bible? So they have to develop this discrimination. And most people don't want to do that. Why? Why? I don't know. Most people, they want to be told the truth. They don't want to discover the truth. Hmm. Very strange. Because hmm. I'm not like that. Okay. Yeah. And so for, for most so. people, yeah. it's all about whether they believe he's Jesus or not. Hmm. If they believe he's Jesus or not, then they can go, well, I can believe everything he says. And they tend to do the same thing as Christians do with the Bible. They yeah. tend to want to believe that everything he says is 100% truth and they're still unwilling to discriminate that even though he says he makes mistakes, 
even though he says he gets it wrong, and even though he's talking about doing experiments, they still want to believe that everything he says is the truth. But how do you know he's not a, he's not a guru and that you're not misguided? How do I know that he's not a guru and he's not misguided? That I'm not misguided? Yes. I cannot, I don't feel, I think it's dangerous to be 100% sure of anything. If you don't keep a little bit of an open mind to the possibility that your beliefs could be wrong, I think there's a, there's a reasonable chance you can get steered into a wrong guru and sort of thing. And there's been times in the past when I've, I've been sucked in, you know, and be just believed what I've been told, you know. And sometimes it's just misinterpreting the truth, you know, like when mm. I met AJ. Mm. You know, most people, when they met AJ years ago, they thought they'd be in at one in a few years. Well, that's turned out that we've been deceiving ourselves to want to believe that. He never said that, you know, and it was like when I first started doing the TM City program, which they talk about levitation and stuff, I thought in a few years I'd be gliding around the sky, you know, mm. and that didn't happen. So I've learned by my mistakes. I've been deceived in the past and, and, and I'm open to the possibility that I'm still deceiving myself in some self-deceptions. So if you can come to me with some evidence to show me that, hey, you're deceiving yourself about that, I'll so be open to it. Have you had evidence in the certain years that you might be a guru and that you might be misguided? Like he has been, you have spent quite a lot of time with him at some moment, so even like going with him on the boat and things like that. So you know it more than quite personally. Well, like, like I said, I can't be 100% sure. Uh, but to me, the weight of evidence is positive. That I would say most of his teachings for me feel like they're coming from Jesus. Some of them might be coming from A.J. Miller. Um, some of his, his his teaching methods might not be a teaching method from Jesus. They might be a teaching method from A.J. Miller. And, you know, his upbringing in the, as a Jehovah's Witness and stuff like that, there may still be aspects of his upbringing as a Jehovah's Witness, which has crept into his way of doing things mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So I'm discriminating with what I see in terms of his... Um, his behaviour and his teachings, in the same way that AJ would ask Christians to be discriminating in what in when, when they read the Bible. Okay. Could he be a cult leader? He may have. He may still have some deceptions about himself and his own nature. But I've looked at a lot of cults. You know, I've got a lot of videos and things of cults and things. I've made a point of studying cults and stuff and he's not remotely like any cult leader I've seen. He might have a few little traits here and there that seem a bit that way but the vast majority of evidence is no. But that's but it's very different when you look at the people that are listening to OJ because a lot of them, a lot of the people are very much like the people that are in cults. Mm -hmm. They want to believe what they're told. Mm -hmm. They want to believe it's the truth. And they're like this with respect to being told anything that's outside what they want to believe. Yes. But that's, I, I learned long ago that you can't judge a movement by the people in it. Yes. You know, even if it's a guru, you can't judge a guru by the people that are around the guru. Uh, because often the people closest to the guru are the people that are willing to step on people's heads to get close to the guru because they believe that they'll make faster spiritual progress the closer they can be to the guru. So and people have tried to do that with AJ. Mm. So have you observed any moment that um, AJ Miller tried to take advantage of the people and try to manipulate them or force them into his own for his own interest no 
with you or with other of you. No. no. Which is a trait of a cult leader, what we call oh, like manipulate our weaknesses. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. You have not observed that on you absolutely. in the whole time. It doesn't mean that you couldn't look at it from a perspective mm. and say, oh, well, there might be something like that. Because mm. um, there's certainly no um, coercive thing mm. there, but there could be things that you might call subtle manipulation. You know, like you could say, Hey, if you do this, this is going to be the consequences. Um, you could call that trying to manipulate somebody. Well, you will, you will influence their decisions. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So you could say that's influencing the yes. decision, you know. But if you make that decision and, the, and these consequences to happen to you, I don't give a shit, mm. you know. It's no skin of my nose if you don't do what I, what I say is not a good thing to do. Well, and AJ is certainly like that. And what, what is more of a cult leader, it would make you feel bad about your decision if it's not the decision he wants you to take. Has that happened to you that you felt you felt AJ Miller want you make, to make you feel bad about something? Because well, you don't it, it, take it, the right as decision. A, as I said, there mm. Can, mm. you can look at it from a perspective like that. Mm. For example, um, as you're aware, I say some things about AJ that some people perceive as an attack on AJ. I don't see it that way at all. To me, it's I'm looking at the real guy rather than the honeymoon seeing what you want to see perception that a lot of people have of him and sometimes i've mentioned some of those things to aj and he's come back at me and said um, you've got this particular soul injury that's causing you to have mistrust in me or you've got some particular soul with some anger within yourself about something or other you know mm. now a lot of people don't like receiving that sort of feedback. So they find it prof profoundly uncomfortable to be challenged with that sort of feedback. And so what happens is they don't make, they don't ask those sort of questions. Mm. They don't, they don't, and, and I know AJ has complained, especially Mary has complained about it in the past, that people don't ask the hard questions. They don't ask the hard questions because they're afraid that AJ will come to them and say, oh, you've got this problem that's causing you to ask this question. Now, you can look at it from one perspective where you can say, well, that's a way to suppress difficult questions. You know, if you, if you ask me a difficult question, I'll tell you about your soul injuries that cause you to ask that difficult question. You could see that as a really subtle form of manipulation. Yes. But you can also look at it from the other perspective where he's just giving the person the feedback which is telling him about their soul injuries and, and he's probably bloody right. So the, the reason you are asking those questions and the way you are focusing about that, but that doesn't mean the question is not valid. Yes. And so he would be certainly manipulative. He would tell the truth only to difficult question or Question yeah, challenging he still him, tells, but he, he still answers the question. That's the difference. Is yes. that he still answers the question. Like when I was in the TM movement, um, mm. if you ask difficult questions or you got you created problems in some or other, sometimes they would just write you off as just unstressing. You know, you've just got stuff, you've just got emotions mm. bubbling mm. up within you mm. that's causing these thoughts and things to come. And so you're, you're only bringing this up because you're unstressing. He's just unstressing. And it was a means, it, it, it often got used as a means to ignore what the person had said. Like in church, it would be like that if you ask question, unsettled question. Yeah, yeah. You've got this problem. That means we can ignore what you've just no said. Question. Yes. And now AJ might say you've got this problem, but then he doesn't tend to ignore what you've said, mm. and that's the difference. Yes. And the other thing is that 
in my essay, often you have that problem to any kind of question we ask when there is an unloving motive or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So what, people are often yes. afraid to ask yes. AJ questions yes. simply because they're afraid mm. to have mm. the truth told to mm. them about themselves. Mm. Mm. So how did that feel when he said, like, you ask this question because of you have this problem about whatever, doubting or things. How did that feel to you? Or you said well, it's not that Well, I look at it from two perspectives. Mm. I go, okay, there's some good feedback. Let's look at that within mm. myself to see whether it can be true. Mm. And, yeah, mm. it's pretty, uh, you know, I've pretty well always seen it. Okay. But the thing is, I still want to ask the question. Yes. And I still want the question answered. Yes. And there's loads of people out there that would like to hear that same question. So... Do you feel he gave you this feedback to make you feel bad about yourself? Or he, has a no, he had a loving intention? Um, he doesn't do it to make you feel bad about yourself. He hasn't done, done it to me to make me feel mm. bad about myself. Mm. Um, I'm not 100% sure that it, there's not something within him that would rather not be asked those hard questions. Like he's not in at one minute yet. He's still got his own emotional injuries. He's still got issues with respect to his own identity that he's dealing with. Yes. You know, it's possible that yes. maybe there is some little thing in there that mm -hmm. doesn't like being asked the really hard questions. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is a little bit of that there. Yes. But in comparison to any other cult leader mm. or any cult leader or guru or anybody in that sense. Mm. He's head and shoulders and mm. head and shoulders and body and you know everybody mm. else is down ankle level and he's up there. Mm. You know. Mm. But he's just not perfect. Well and and, and that's the, you you don't mean you put him on a pedestal at all. No, no, I, no you like, just question everything. To me to mm. me mm. he's not perfect. Mm. And that's okay. Mm. That's okay. And I can I can say to people, well mm. AJ's not perfect. Mm. People might see that as an attack, mm. Mm. but hey, it's, it's not an attack. I'm just saying, oh, he's not perfect. He's still got stuff to learn. He's mm. still progressing himself. Yeah, um, yeah. Yes. And, and sometimes his teaching is his teaching's getting better over the years, and, and sometimes people have misinterpreted what he said, mm. and, and they've gone off, mm. got sidetracked and all sorts yes. of stuff. Yes. But, but his teaching's getting better, mm. so he's getting better at pulling people back in, you know. Mm -hmm. I feel like if somebody was to turn up and kill him, the modern version of crucifixion, that we could still go the way of the Christian church. It still could all get corrupted because people haven't mm -hmm. made enough progress yet to be able to continue on from where he's left off. Mm -hmm. We still need him to be able to correct people when they go mm -hmm. too far off track. I think yeah. it's still very important that he's around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, have you ever desired AJ Miller to rescue you from your sins, like the Christians? I have felt there was for the first eight years or so, I felt like I had to listen to everything he said, had to go to every meeting that he had, I had to get everything I possibly could from him, and maybe that had a bit of an element of wanting him to rescue me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the more exposure I could have to him personally, the, the faster I would make progress mm -hmm. myself. Um, but I don't feel that anymore. You don't feel it's the truth anymore? I don't think it's necessary mm -hmm. to be listening to everything he has to say because um, he's basically told me everything I need to know mm. at this point. Mm. When I get to the next stage, mm. uh, when I work through all this stuff, you know, mm. he's told me stuff mm. eight years ago that I'm still working on. Mm. You know, when I work through that, mm. then it's like I'm in I'm in kindergarten here. When I get to the stage where I graduate to grade one, then I'll be open to mm. grade one teachings. Mm. But there's no point listening to grade one teachings mm. while I'm in kindergarten. Yes. So you feel the ball is in your... Camp. The ball's in my court. In my, your court. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> have, ever, have, have you ever been asked to pay, to give money 
for for what uh, divine truth teachings? Well, the first question, the first answer is no. In fact, I once lent him my backhoe, and um, totally as a gift. And um, and he had it for a few days and was using it. And I and he said to me, um, "Can I have your bank account details? Um, I'd like to give you a donation for the, for the use of your backhoe." And I said, "Well, it's it's just a gift. You can you don't have to give me anything. But if you want it, give me something. You can give me something." He put the amount of money into my bank account that he would have paid a commercial operator to come in and and do the job for him. And so he is very generous. He's a very generous fellow. Um, it, like I said, with with perspectives, if you were looking for something that could say, "Oh yes, I've had to pay for this," um, when you go to an assistance group, you have to pay for the price of the accommodation. And and you know if 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 you go there, you, you pay for the price of the accommodation. You're not paying for the teachings. But you're paying for the accommodation. Well, unless you have a place where you can stay for free, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But even then, mm. there's still a charge for all of the thing that was involved in buying the equipment and, and for the setup fees and the renting of the venue. So you are you are asked to pay. So that? you can't go to an assist. Well, actually, you can go to an assistance group without paying anything. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is they say, it costs us this much to run it outside of anything for us personally. And this is how much, if, if, if you were to make a donation of this amount, um, that would cover our costs. But do you feel um, they make you feel guilty if you don't? I think I have personal experience with one person that's felt that has gone along to assistance groups and not paid anything. And has felt guilty, but that's her shit. That's her stuff. You don't feel that they they want to make you feel that you have to donate. No, do you? No, no. Okay. But people can feel that they have to yeah. donate. Yeah. So it's not coming from AJ mm -hmm. Mary, mm -hmm. but that doesn't stop mm -hmm. people from feeling it. Just the same. Mm -hmm. You certainly could go to an assist. You, you can, and and people do go to assistance groups without paying anything, without even though they know that it costs this amount of money to hire the venue and to get all the stuff and to put everything together and they've been told this and they just go and they've just gone well I don't have that amount of money but I still want to go what about the, the seminar the, the the previous teaching seminar open seminar when oh, they were there's never been any charges for that because it's never been well even with those the renting of the venue um, was it was a lot smaller and so AJ just covered it okay so did you feel obliged to pay each time you went to the this no. no 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 you know it's always the thing to make donations and I make donations to AJ yeah. so what you you say that what does that mean um, that anybody even with no money could listen and follow the teachings uh, and not be Penalized for it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the other side of the question could be the people that donate a lot get special treatment. Is it uh, true? And that I'm not sure about. Okay. Um, it's certainly true that people that have donated a lot of money have had special treatment. What does that mean, special treatment? Well, they get a lot more access to AJ for a start. How come? What do you mean? How come? How, how they get more well? Because they're donating money for for works that AJ is wanting to do. Yes. And in the process, they get involved with those works. Uh, okay. Just by the nature of their donation, you mean? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Is, or, or do you mean that is it because they give more that AJ want to treat them better than other people that give less? I don't know. You don't I don't know, but if you look at the uh, the members of God's way, um, most of them have put in a lot of money. Well, but is that 
because they put a lot of money that they are member of God's way? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. But what I'm saying is if you look at it from one perspective, it's just these people are very dedicated and they're, and, and they're, they're, they're really wanting to do this. And they're really, and because they're so dedicated, they put in money, you know. And it's not because they put in money that they've, they end up in these positions. But you could look at it from this perspective, from the other perspective, and say, "Oh, it's because they put in the money that they end up in these positions." So you don't know why. I don't know. You, no, it, I can see that people might look at that and go, mm, "Yes, this is people that are putting in a lot of money get to spend more time with AJ." Um, it, it is, but there, but like I said, there's a lot of things that. You can look at it from that direction and criticise right. it from that direction, but you can look at it from this direction and it's all perfectly logical and loving. So, it, as it be a pattern, because you have known him for a long time, that people giving more money have been treated in a different way? Well, what is interesting is that there are people that have given a lot of money and then haven't been treated well. Oh. So, well, so we treat people well, in, badly. Well, in other words, mean, they've been told stuff about themselves that has upset them, and, 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 and caused them to be distanced from AJ. So you mean? So you, just because you give him a lot of money doesn't mean, or, or not necessarily him, but you give a lot of money to what he's doing, doesn't mean you will get to spend more time with AJ. So that's that's sort of the the thing. Okay. Just so there must be another reason. You can't pay. To spend time with him, okay, like you can with most gurus. So, and do you mean he treated the people badly? Uh, no, not badly. Uh, it just means that, like for example, somebody gets told that they can't no longer be a member, like no longer a director of God's Way, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And, and so they 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 no longer have that contact with AJ that they once had, and yet they've put in a lot of money. So that's an indication that you can't pay for. Being close mm. to him, mm. and is is AJ pushing them away? Like he doesn't want to see them anymore. I don't know. I'm don't not know. that close enough to really know. Have you it. have you observed that? I don't know. You never observed that AJ pushed someone away, like that he doesn't. Or you? Well, I've t I've seen a situation where somebody has turned up at his at his place with a gift, coming from the wrong place that he wants to buy. Mm. an interaction with AJ mm. with this gift mm. and he's been told you're coming from the wrong place here mm. um, take your gift and go away mm. yeah, so he doesn't want the person in his own place uh, when he feels uh, it's an alarming motive like, mm. like that yeah. mm. okay how, how you your family or your friends uh, have taken the news that you are interested in in, in, in what say someone who claims to be <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> They're used to it. <laughs> you know, like me me um, being associated with the fellow who claims to be Jesus is, is nothing new, you know. At a point I was talking about I was levitating, you know. My mum used to think that when I was locking myself in my room um, meditating that I was doing laps of the room just below the ceiling, you know. <laughs> So they're all used to it. <laughs> Doesn't mean. And, and the interesting thing is, it, it, and they've been open to what I have to say to some extent, but mm. um, they're not particularly spiritual. My brother is a little bit, but his wife um, sort of steps on it. Anytime. So, uh, have you felt like attack of condescent to no. or judge or not? For you no. For you? not really. No, no, no. They're pretty. Um, Pretty willing to let me do anything I want. What about your friends? Yeah, they've been. I've always been pretty careful with my friends. I have a small group of people that um, are good friends, and I don't choose people as friends that are likely to be judgmental like that. So my, my you, friends might not want to be interested in what I'm doing. Yes. But they don't think badly of me. Because so you of kept it. your friends. You, you yeah, yeah. I've never lost any friends because of mm. my association mm. with AJ. Mm. That's which is interesting. Mm. Pro probably very rare. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, do you feel uh, better or superior than other people who, who are not listening to Divine Truth teaching? I feel different to them. Sometimes I envy them. You envy the people who are not listening, you mean? Mm. Life is easy and simple for them. <laughs> they think they all, the, all that they've got to do is go to work and get married and have children and, and, and accumulate all these possessions and that's all life's about. You know, that's, that's a simple way to live your life. If you think that, if you really believe that that's a great thing, well, hey, maybe, <laughs> who am I to say that it's, <laughs> I'm better than them, you know? But do they feel really happy? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. But they believe mm, they are. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, you sometimes envy the other, but do you feel better than some? Different, but better? I feel different. 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 Um, and all my life I've felt different, mm. you know, um, because of the Asperger's mm. thing. I've been aware that I'm different to other people. Mm. And, uh, and there's... And in some ways, that difference is better. Like the way I, my perspective on the world, um, in many ways, I see is better. Because um, I tend to see through the bullshit like most people, like a lot of people don't, you know, but it creates a lot of problems for me at the time. And, uh, but then there's other ways in which I'm worse, you know, like my. I've long, all my life, I've been very aware of my social uh, incapacity, you know, and uh, so there's aspects of myself that I feel I have advantages with respect to other people and aspects of myself that I feel I'm disadvantaged with respect to other people. When you talk disadvantage, are you talking about your sensitivity to... Other people so ask the question again. When when you talk about why you feel disadvantaged toward other people or compared to other people, are you are you uh, talking or are you thinking about the fa the fact that you are oversensitive and that or that you would I I don't know what 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 do you mean? Uh, is this part that is kind of. Um. I still have the Asperger thing of having trouble really opening up to an intimate relationship. Okay. And that's yeah. a definite negative. Yes. Okay. Okay. And you feel some pain from that. Mm. Yes. All right. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, yeah. La, la, last questions uh, in, in this part. Um, do you feel to talk about what you learn or experiment or experience with Divine Truth teaching to others in your life? Um, I'm reluctant to say very much about stuff that I'm not a living example of. Um, I will tell people about AJ and that he claims to be Jesus and point them towards the website and tell them some of his teachings. Um, Are you not scared? Well, no, but I first make an appraisal as to whether the person's likely to appreciate being told that. Mm -hmm. And most people don't appreciate being told that, so I don't raise it. Okay. Usually what happens is I throw out a bit of a bit of bait. You know, say, say something that if if they go, huh, then I'll say a bit more. Mm. But if mm. you get no response, then yes, I don't bother. Yes. So, uh, but are you willing? Are you preach? Are you willing also to to want to know more? It's, are, are you willing to have other to listen and to want you to talk about it? Are you willing that other I'm not have quite you understanding desire, your question. Have you a desire for others to be open to hear about divine truth? Do I have a desire for others to be open to hear yes. about divine truth? To attract others in your life so you can share 
of what you what you discovered. If somebody turns it up in my life that is interested in hearing about divine truth, that's great. So you are very rare. Yes. But I, like one time, I encountered mm. some people mm. in the taxi cab, and it was a half hour trip, mm. and I just mentioned something casually, offhandedly, and they went, "Tell me more." Mm. And so we ended up in this great dis- discussion mm. about. AJ and stuff and they were really open minded and stuff and and when they got out they thanked me and and, and I thanked them because I said it's very rare to encourage mm. to, to encounter people that are open to hearing about this sort of mm. stuff you know and that was, that was a wonderful experience mm. but encountering people like that is very rare why why is it so rare you, do you reckon Most people have their belief systems and don't want to change. And they're not open to uncomfortable truth. Mm. 